Hello and welcome to Inside Blockchain on Crypto TV Plus. I am Tony Obiadjiri. Over the past few months, I've engaged diverse people in conversations on the subject cryptocurrency. And one of the major feedbacks I keep getting is the fact that this cryptocurrency is misconstrued for MMM or other Ponzi schemes as the case may be. On the show today, we are going to be looking into the dynamics of crypto trading and investments. One of the reasons I went after him is because he has recorded a series of successful trainings in cryptocurrency trading and investment. I am joined by the founder and CEO of Crypto Hub, Chris Annie. Hello, Chris. How are you doing? Yeah, good to have you on the show. Thanks for coming. Same here. Same here. <laughs> okay, so uh, um, you've been busy going round and round and trying to help people understand what cryptocurrency is about. How's it been? Fine, fine. Um, it's actually exciting seeing that people are opening up to a new opportunity to the future, to the best, one of the best way. I, I would even say the best way to earn online. It's never been better than having something that is decentralized, something that is not controlled by one party, and then seeing a number of people who are participating in something bigger than the dot-com era. It's something big for us. All right, fantastic. Yeah. Now, we are looking at crypto trading and investment, the mm -hmm. dynamics behind this. Um, people are confusing this thing to be MMM or on the post scheme. All right, but before we go straight into crypto trading, what really is cryptocurrency? Can you help me understand it? If I want to use a very, very um, simple definition of cryptocurrency, uh, the word crypto uh, and currency. Currency, there is money. Um, crypto, there has to do with um, something called security, secured money. Okay. So cryptocurrency is digital currency. Uh, it has both the application of blockchain technology and cryptography with it. I could also use the word that cryptocurrency is secured money also because one of the futures or one of the major reasons why it's actually secured money or one of the outstanding futures of cryptocurrency is the fact that security is one of the major importance of it. So it's one of the reasons why we could just say cryptocurrency is secured money. It's also digital currency, but this time around built with the blockchain and cryptographic principles with it. Okay, so you're yeah. saying that it is not the type of money that can be seen with the physical eyes. No, it's, it's not. Just online. It's like online. Normal fiat it's currency. it's not it's not fiat currency. Mm -hmm. It's digital. Uh, funny enough, over eighty percent of world's currency is already digital. But this time around, it's not built on cryptography. It's not uh, on any blockchain, and that's what makes cryptocurrency also different. All right, fantastic. Now, what makes it different from MMM? Um, what makes cryptocurrency different from other Ponzi, from anything called Ponzi scheme, or MMM, or whatever it is, is the fact that. This is, this is just like um, a technology on its own first. It's a technology, it's a currency, it is real money, it's, uh, it's a commodity, it's a security. There are many definitions to, there are many ways you can classify cryptocurrency. Uh, it's just like now saying um, the dollar is being used for drugs does not mean the dollar was actually found dead based on drugs or it's, not, or it's called drug money. The dollar or the naira is also used for um, um, dubious businesses. It doesn't mean that was actually the reason why it was formed. Yeah. Uh, those Ponzi scheme can use naira, they can use dollar, or they can use Bitcoin. Yeah. So it does not put Bitcoin or cryptocurrency in the same classification as a Ponzi scheme. It's not because uh, look at the first decentralized cryptocurrency called Bitcoin. The first decentralized cryptocurrency, uh, it has no, no CEO on board. There's no company that owns Bitcoin. Bitcoin is open source. It is decentralized. There are different parties to the ecosystem. There are those who are the miners. There are those who are the exchangers. There are those who are the software developers. No one party controls the system. So it's, it's not even a Ponzi scheme by any means. All right, fantastic. Now, looking at the phase that money has gone through, right, from when we started using calories, you know, down to coins, and, yeah. you know, down to fiat currency and all that, can we say cryptocurrency is the future of money? Um, we are not only saying it, it's already happening. Uh, the, C the Prime Minister of Malta last week at the UN Assembly meeting in New York said, blockchains have already made cryptocurrency the inevitable future of money. We, we, we're not, well, people, you know, thank God change is constant. People are looking at something that will have security in it, that will not be, sens that will be censorship resistant, that will be borderless. 
If I travel to Ghana, if I travel to Yugoslavia, if I travel to Brazil or Singapore, I should be able to use the same currency globally. The internet doesn't discriminate. So why should currency discriminate at the same time? So if we could solve that same issue on the internet, we should be able to solve that issue with currencies. And thank God the internet has given the world, it has made the world like a global village. It's now possible for me to do business with anybody around the world. So we should be able to be talking about the same value, the same currency. Because uh, governments printed or government fiat or fiat issued by the government has actually produce a lot of inequality, meaning that my five hours in Nigeria is not the same five hours in the U.S. Yeah, because if I, earn, uh, if I earn a thousand naira and somebody earns a thousand dollars, because of the currency issues and government policies, something is already wrong. So we need something that can bring a balance. And that's why technologies like the blockchain, cryptocurrency, they are bringing what we call equality to humanity. Yeah, stability. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, okay, so uh, before we go on this short break, um, are we looking at a system where the whole world will interact with just one kind of currency? No, uh, the world won't interact with one kind of currency, but the, wor the world won't interact. It won't even work. You see, humans have, from the start, been guided by sentiment. Uh, no matter how best something is, we may decide not to use it. Hmm. It's, it's human nature. Human nature won't conform. If not, the world would have had one leader. Mm -hmm. that, you know, as powerful as the U.S. is, some people still don't agree with them. China is coming to challenge. Russia is coming to challenge. So it's, it's one, one, one system won't be enough, but one currency has already been leading that revolution, which is Bitcoin. But it won't stop at just having Bitcoin. There will be thousands and thousands of currencies across the globe. All right, thank you. It's been interesting discussing with Chris Ami on the dynamics of crypto trading and investments. However, we've not actually explored the topic for today. So let's go on a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to be talking more about this topic. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Hi, this is Cynthia Pedian with AWS Mining. I'm Alexia hefti rossier I'm Anand Mohan from Technobrain. This is Anu Bardwaj from Women Investing, Women Digital. And you are watching. You're watching. You're watching. You're watching Crypto TV Plus. Crypto TV Plus. Crypto TV Plus. Crypto TV Plus. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Just before we went on the short break, my guest here, Chris Annie, was helping me understand what cryptocurrency is about and how that it is not in line with what we call the Ponzi schemes like your MMF. Right now, we are going to be discussing the dynamics of crypto trading and investment. So, Chris, what really is crypto trading and investment? Okay, it's just as simple as trading currencies against each other. Okay. Um, let's start with the basic one we've known before, Forex trading. People trade the US dollar against the Naira, Naira against the pounds, pounds against the Japanese yeah. currency, the China currency against um, the Canadian dollar. It's the same thing in cryptocurrency trading and investment. Um, Bitcoin is the first, uh, has the highest market capitalization running for the past uh, 9 to 10 years. Um, so Bitcoin being the most valuable cryptocurrency has now given for the emergence of other currencies. Now, there are other currencies. Currently, there are over 2,000 cryptocurrencies in the world. And yes, because adoption has never started real time. Now. What cryptocurrency trading and investment is simply trading one Bitcoin against another altcoin just to gain more money. Okay. The goal is actually economic freedom. The goal is actually to make more money. Okay. The goal is actually to make more Bitcoin. For, most of it, for someone like me, my one is to stack more Bitcoin. So it's like saying I come on an exchange, I use my Bitcoin or my Ethereum to trade against another coin or trade with another coin so that I can increase my hedge or my portfolio in Bitcoin or Ethereum, or even US dollars. There are people who use the US dollars to trade against some currencies. They are, so it's just that way, just that you can make more money. It's just like saying, okay, I'm buying Ethereum. A practical example is, uh, let's say I have a coin called Ethereum, which is my capital, and I have, let's say, 10,000 US dollars in Ethereum. Okay. And I look at another coin called um, uh, ODC, OCL, okay. and um, I buy that coin. Maybe the coin is selling at a dollar, and I want to sell at two dollars. It's the same way. I use my Ethereum of ten thousand dollars to buy a coin, 
of that is one one dollar. My Ethereum may be worth Ethereum may be two fifty dollars per one Ethereum okay. or two hundred dollar per one Ethereum. It means that that two fifty dollar Ethereum will make me have forty Ethereums. Okay. Now that forty Ethereum, I'm going to use it to now buy one dollar each of that ODC coin. Okay. Now it means that I will now have four hundred Ethereum. Uh, ten thousand dollar Ethereum, and I have ten thousand of the other coin. Definitely, there's an increment. There's an increment whenever there is an increase in price, or there will be a decrease, or there will be you run at a loss if there's a decrease in price. It's the same way. So, uh, by the time I do that, I'm increasing both my dollar value and my Ethereum value. So, if I used to have, um, if I used to have two fifty Ethereum, or if I used to have forty Ethereum based on the ten thousand dollars. And I use that same Ethereum to buy that coin. And that coin goes from $1 to $2. There's the possibility that my Ethereum will move from 40 Ethereum to 80 Ethereum. It's the same thing. If I have two Bitcoin I'm trading and I use it to buy maybe Ethereum, and Ethereum goes from $250 to $500, what has happened to my Bitcoin is that my Bitcoin will move from 2 BTC to 4 Bitcoin, meaning that I now have from twelve thousand dollars plus, and I have twenty-four thousand dollars plus. That's actually how crypto Massive trading. Yes, yeah. yeah. So that's how you trade coins against themselves. All right. So yes. why, why should people go into? There's a lot of future. There's a lot of future in cryptocurrency trading. Um, the first of all is that the likes of Nasdaq, the likes of uh, IMF, have released a note saying crypto trading is not even as risky as people think. So imagine that kind of endorsement coming from uh, a financial institution like that. Uh, I used to, I, I remember the time, I, it's, it's one of the easiest ways to earn money online. Um, financial freedom for me came more when I came into the cryptocurrency space. And one of the goals were years for economic freedom. It, it, there's nothing as easy as, as simple as having something run 24 hours. Cryptocurrency trading is the only market Quote me anywhere is the only market that runs 247 Monday to Sunday, Sunday to Monday, 365 days a week, a, a year, sorry, seven days a week, non stop. Other markets in the stock trade from Monday to Friday. Whenever there is a public holiday, stock markets may not even function, banks may not open. But you see, even the Forex market stays at Monday to Friday. So by Friday, they close, and then um, nobody's trading on Saturday. But you see, for cryptocurrency trading, and again, some of these markets close by 4 p.m. <laughs> so stock, the bank, the FX, so they close by 4 p.m. But you see, for cryptocurrency, it is no closing days, no closing trade hours. as you want. If you want to die on the computer, Endless. die there. If you want to live there. So it's, it's something revolutionary for the first time because there is no single party controlling the existence of the system. And that's made possible first because nobody's controlling Bitcoin. So if you have a currency that nobody controls, it means the currency stays 247. Nobody controls it. No central power says stop using this currency now. And that's something revolutionary. Yeah, so someone, someone actually says it's a currency for the people. For the people. Your, your own government. Exactly. <laughs> Be your own bank. So you can imagine you can spend this money. So as long as you can spend Bitcoin anytime, it's already given room for the currencies to be used anytime. So it's just, that's one of the edge. And you can start with your mobile phone and the exchange. I remember when I was in my year one, I needed to, uh, I needed to buy stocks then. My father used to send me, my pocket money then used to be 5,000. I had bank with Intercontinental Bank then, that is late, that is gone now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to use the word late. Okay, so I, I saved money back then. I bought um, Japo oil. I bought... Um, I bought these things through a friend because there's no way for us to have access to yeah, direct to direct to Nigerian stock exchange. So we're buying these things through stock workers, through public offers, and all those things. I, I don't know where those stocks are today, <laughs> but you see, uh, the, one of the good things about cryptocurrency trading and why people should invest here is easy access. See, I, I don't need to pay anybody any money to to get an exchange, or like I need to go, or like before I need to go see a stock broker. Even if, I'm, even if I'm in Nigeria now and I want to invest in a company in the U.S. or I want to buy Tesla stock, I've got to go through a stock broker. Now, the good thing, the, the bad thing is that some stock uh, agents discriminate. 
they will, they will censor you. If your flag or IP is showing Nigeria, they may not allow you. <laughs> and that's bad. bad. So now there's uh, one easy access for everybody to participate in a system that is for all. I can open an exchange anywhere in the world. Any this year, I was, okay, last week I was in Ghana, the upper week I was in, all through the period I had my African journey, though, I was in one way penetrating different exchanges, trading anywhere I like. Okay. I wasn't waiting for... Uh, whether it's four o'clock, sometimes I wake up in the night to do my trading. Same thing I do now. In, you know, so you, you just you just it's easy access is there, and you can even start with small capital. With fifty dollars, you can buy Bitcoin. With hundred dollars, you can start trading cryptocurrencies. I remember one of my students who started um, trading cryptocurrencies in 2016, 17, and the first trade he did was with twenty dollars. And started trading with twenty dollars and grew that portfolio in a couple of months to three hundred dollars. Wow. Yeah. So it's it's something that you can start with small money, and um, you know also unlike other traditional systems where by the time you want to withdraw your money they'll tell you two to three working days. No. Once I make my bitcoin now, I know one Sunday I need to attend them. Um, uh, there was an event I needed to attend in Ibado, Ibado Blockchain Conference hosted by Toby Kalijai. Yeah. And so that Sunday, I, I had to just say, let me just do a quick trade from church. I just came out from church and I said, okay, let me do a quick trade. I got, so I said, okay, I'm going to leave for Ibadan today so I can be part of the conference the next day. So I just did a trade and I got 70% the same day. And the same day, I spent that same Bitcoin, the amount of money I made on a Sunday. Now, unlike other traditional system, I will even trade on Sunday, no? That won't be, be possible. So I, you, you, you can make your money now and you can re withdraw immediately. It's not like saying you're depending on one admin or one person, no, no, no institution to now process you. No, it's, that, that's, that's one of the barriers that's right. broken. All right, great. Now, um, in the midst of all these positives, uh, do we have any negatives as regards or the negative sides? Crypto trading, is also, crypto trading is also risky. Uh, very risky is that if you don't know what you're doing and if you don't seek proper education, you will you, you get missing the system. Uh, in such a way that some people just come in and they look for all kind of coins and they buy. And the next day their portfolio is down. You no, know, some some time ago I, I went to <laughs> that was Ikeja to interview people on the streets to mm. find out what they think about you know cryptocurrency and the likes. And someone said he's not giving us an interview. I was like, why? He said it's not that thing that took all my money away. Yeah. What is the cause of that? Ignorance or...? Ignorance. Well, number one is ignorance. Number two is that people don't understand the basics of investing. See, um, crypto trading, stocks, forex, or whatever market or real estate market you're playing, the first thing first is understanding the basics of investing. When I came to the blockchain space and the cryptocurrency space, I did all kinds of studies I was doing to keep myself. We've had coins. I, I, like early this year, I had a particular coin I, I, I called. And then the coin went down 2x. The coin is back now, okay. six months back, the line. The coin is back. But you see, some people don't also have patience when it comes to investing. Mm. Some people don't want to go get the right knowledge when it comes to investing. Secondly, when some people are trading, some people don't use stop loss. Because in our institution, in our platform now, we tell you the need for stop loss. We tell you the need for fundamental analysis. We tell you what to look out for. Then I give you, for me, when I'm even going to an investment, I look at the worst case scenario I can handle. If I can't handle the worst case scenario on a particular loss, I won't go into that oh, trade. Yeah, and people must also know that Bitcoin and cryptocurrency trading also isn't just a short-term gain sometimes. Like, for me, I have portfolios spread in short gains. I have portfolios I'm not going to look at till next year, till next two years. Why? I, it's a condition for me. Because there are things that are put in place, you know, that, oh, this one must do this for me. Yeah. Now, it may not go 100% right, but my odds will be higher than the negatives. Right. So these are things you should look at. There was a time when Bitcoin crashed from $1,000 to $300. There are many people who are hodlers today, who are, who, are, who, are, who are big guys in the Bitcoin space, who held during those periods. The largest miner had such. There are people who saw Bitcoin crash from $10 to $3. There are those who saw Bitcoin crash from ninety dollars to about I mean, ten dollars or so then if you've seen all this history of investing you know what decision you're taking and the problem with some people too is that a mo this let's say september when well, september now and they come into bitcoin space by june 
then they want to invest money for school fees for September in June. And maybe something happens, the coin doesn't move, they said it has eaten their money. So you don't go and put in money for immediate expense. If you have one million naira now you want to spend for something, and you say, Chris, I want to do crypto invest, I ask you first, do you have do you have need for this money for the next six months? If you tell me yes, I'll tell you don't invest in crypto. No, even if that coin or that Bitcoin or that cryptocurrency will do 25,000%, yes, I will advise you because I want you to place, uh, be at the safer side. Because your child education is also important because you could also get the same money to also invest in future. Investment is not running. All right, fantastic. Now, in addition to all you've said, yeah. uh, what are the factors to put in place right, for someone who wants to go into you know, crypto investing? For example, I want to be part of this. So what, what things should first I be of, mindful of? First of all, um, all this still boils down to education. Uh, I'm still here today because, first of all, I had the likes, I, I say it anywhere, the likes of Andreas Antonopoulos. And after my, after all my teachings with Andreas and all that, I got some that coach in the US who started training me on cryptocurrency trade and investment. I didn't just dump into the system and say, oh, I know how to trade. No, I had to start with coaching. And from coaching, I saw the risk. I saw, so I was able, I was already, I already knew what I was going in for. You see, most of investments are more of emotional, psychological first than the action you take. So before I take a decision, I, that's why sometimes people keep wanting to know, Chris, you're a good trader. You, you, you've actually helped a lot of people make millions of Naira and all that. Yeah, true. To that, yes. But we've also had our own fair share of losses. But the truth is that in trading, in investing, whether stocks, forex, or cryptocurrency, the major goal is to have more wins than losses. Recently, there's a kind of trade I've entered in the past two months. I've never had a loss. People keep, I've never had a loss for the past two months trading cryptocurrencies, especially on this new margin trading I've been into. And people are like, how do you? I said, it's first your emotions, psychological. You must know those things first. Now, am I willing to take this risk? Then you now look at things like fundamental analysis, which we teach at CryptoHub.club. You look at uh, technical analysis, what to look out for, overview of crypto trading, how to use an exchange. Uh, then these are the things you also need to consider. Then when you come into crypto trading investment, you should also ask yourself, do I want to be on the investing part or the trading part? In the trading part, you have different forms. You're either, you're either scalping, you're either doing short-term trading, you're either doing daily trading, and do you have time for that? If you don't have that, I had, I had a friend of mine who came easy and like, Chris, I want to learn crypto trading. I said, see, I know your job already. You won't have time. You will not have time for this. Rather, go for the investment plan my company has. You won't have time. And I said, and we're six months down the line now. The guy has never even opened his Bitcoin wallet with Bitcoin anymore. Why? He doesn't really have time for that. And it doesn't mean there are other people who don't have that. Other young people who can be part of it. Who, okay, they have time. They have all the, the resources. Okay, you want to go into this. You can go into this as a full-time stuff. But you, okay. transitioning to this, you should know what you're doing before you take the decision to go in long term with it. All right, fantastic. Now, going into the market, looking at all the list of cryptocurrencies we have, how do I know the right cryptocurrency to invest in? It still comes to fundamental analysis. I, I'm just saying this. Um, many of the coins out there may not last the next five years. So you should know what you're trading for. So the most, uh, of all cryptocurrency tokens to hold, the most important to hold is make sure you have Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Because Bitcoin will outlast every other currency you see. And quote me anywhere. Why? It has the highest number of security, decentralized. It's, 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 it's not controlled by one man, unlike many others there. So before, and you see, I'm not now discourage people from, which I need to say because this is a TV program, yeah. is the fact that people should run away from MLM guided currencies. Ensure that when you want to buy the coin, they will tell you to share your referral link. This is different from having a network. I'm into network marketing too. This is different from having a network marketing program where it's okay, share referral link to this person to introduce this person to your business. It's not bad. I can I can have I can have a wallet with Coinbase or any currency or crypto wallet, and they tell me okay for me to so I can be getting referral links and all that. Binance does the same thing. Yeah. Share your down is different, but when a coin starts and they tell you um, share your link with another person so that um, you will get, you build, then when you build, then you now do an internal exchange. Those kind of MLM coins should be discounted. Run away from them when you see them. What's the, what's the disadvantage of that? The disadvantage is the fact that they don't have, their, they won't come on, the, most of them won't come on the market. 
They don't come to the crypto coin market. They have their own internal exchange where that's where the real Ponzi schemes are. And that's where many people have been involved in before, e.g. the likes of one coin and co. You know, people have been involved in that and they call it cryptocurrency. So when you tell yeah. so when you now meet them to rest, they say, ah, that thing took my money. Yeah, I guess the reason for so yeah, exactly. So those are the MLM systems, those are the real policy systems people should be aware of and run away from them. Then you should also look at the prospects. What what is this coin coming to do? You know, what is this technology trying to disrupt? What is um, the fundamentals? Who are those behind it? And looking at the use cases. The use cases, you know, these things are going to determine a lot of things. The security uh, and, and all that. Look at the likes of Ethereum. Ethereum has been here for more than two years and it's still running. So there are a lot of things that made this coin called Ethereum to rise from have become being a penny some year, two, three years ago to becoming something with hundreds of dollars now. Why? Use case. Many ICUs used Ethereum last year. And Remember that when people are demanding for something, the price will skyrocket. That's it. All right, before I let you go, Chris. You're then you're also, doing... sorry, okay. I wanted to mention one. The person must also have, must have uh, accurate knowledge of technical analysis. If you're going to do trading, you must know when you want to buy. The general rule is buy low, sell high. The question now is by the time you look at the chart, do you want to know where you're going to buy low? Do you don't know where you're going to sell high? And when to sell, when to buy. Okay, how, what about those that are not technically inclined? That's why you must get education. <laughs> that's why you must get education. That's why I always recommend Crypto Hub the club because that's what we do. Okay, yeah, great, great work you guys are doing with Thank crypto. Thank you. What are we looking out for for crypto? Any training coming up? Yes. Touching crypto. Yes, we have we have one coming up in um, October twenty-two in Accra. It's going to be a five days, yeah, five days uh, master class. Uh, though uh, we're going to have participants from Ivory Coast. Uh, some French-speaking nations because I discovered something my my three weeks um, African blockchain business that I went for from Ghana to Togo to Benin Republic and all that I discovered Africa is a huge market for blockchain in short I keep telling people America doesn't need blockchain Africa needs a blockchain more than America needs it more than Europe needs it why what the opportunity is there a lot of people don't even know what when I came around I just don't even know what this crypto trading and investment is a lot of them have been into Ponzi schemes that promised them um, certain percentages daily and they feel like there was one I was in and when I was in Ghana they told me oh this one just came in two weeks and people packed people's money I like these are the same you can still do on your own and they're like is it true yeah I say yes you can open an exchange now and trade on your own and i discovered many people don't even know how to do the same thing in different african countries so from education. from um, ghana we'll be looking at cameroon sometime in december to mm -hmm. cameroon equatorial guinea they're on our map for now all right i, I would suggest uh, our viewers in ghana to partition this how do people register yeah we we have a link uh, then we have a number for that. Then probably the flyer should be on the screen. Okay. You can you can just message the number both on WhatsApp or call us, uh, make inquiries, make your payment. The payment is just three hundred US dollars. You can use mobile money to make your payment or Bitcoin. Uh, more preferably is Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Just when you the, whichever number you see on the screen, just message us and then. Um, will give you all the response you need. All right, finally, Chris, what do you have to say? What are your final words for cryptocurrency, you know, trading and investment? Just like the U.S. Senator said, I, I wish they would play this. Uh, the U, one U.S. Senator earlier this year, when they were doing a fair hearing about um, cryptocurrency, he made this statement, and I want to use this uh, based on the investment knowledge my late father gave to me early in, in life too. He said, in the 80s or so, when the telecom business came around, People didn't believe that you could use a cell phone and you could, use, you could make a call with cell phone and you could transmit. And this senator saw uh, uh, these telecom companies and invested in them early. You see, some of his friends laughed at him. But you see, that investment in telecom business gave him millions of dollars. Imagine a U.S. senator saying that in year 2018. 18. This is in the 1980s something or so, saying he invested early. Now, you can imagine the kind of leaders those kind of people are compared to people who are saying cryptocurrency is a policy scheme and all of that. And this man is saying, oh, I invested early and today, I, he, he said it boldly in the Senate. 
If somebody who made his money from investment can always tell you he's rich yeah. without you thinking, no, oh, where's the money coming from? So you know his source of income already. Like, got major investment and he's from investing in early days in telecom. I said, today, we're looking at something like that also. The cryptocurrency market is a couple of $100 billion, $200 billion now. And this is something that in a couple of years will reach $20 trillion. Today, the crypto market is less than $300 billion. Calculate 300 billion to 20 trillion. That means even a senator, a government official who has been there when there was a tech revolution early, he seen this and said this is revolutionary. And I know they'll play it after this, yeah. after this is it. And looking at something that's revolutionary and saying this could hit a couple of 20 trillion dollars. The likes of Tim Drapper are saying this Bitcoin, this market will hit five trillion, eighty trillion dollars in some years to come. This is the same way many people predicted the dot com era. Yeah. And look at where Amazon is today. Apple, look at where Apple is. Apple became the first uh, is it Amazon or Apple that became the first trillion dollar company and the next. And look at where Google is. Look at where they were nine years ago, ten years ago, twenty years ago, and look at where they are today. It's the same thing with the cryptocurrency market. We are where Google is twenty years ago. We are where Apple is twenty years ago. It means that we have more upside, more future to look up to. The the industry is growing, more innovations are coming, new talents are needed daily. The market is expanding. Countries are opening up to it. And like I tell people, I say one of the areas my company is going to dominate so far is in Africa. The African market has not even opened 20%. Yeah, so you can imagine what the future holds. If you don't have Bitcoin and you've learned or you've heard about Bitcoin, history will not be happy with you. Or you will even regret it that there's a time you used to hear about this Bitcoin thing and you don't have it. Or you didn't pay attention to it. And tomorrow, it's going to be like those who bought land early. You can imagine those who bought land uh, in the early days when Lagos was like a bush. Today, they are landlords in the city. Today, they can tell you they have hundreds and you'll be like, how did you do this? this blood money? is the same thing that's going to happen in the cryptocurrency space. So we have more upside, we have more potentials, and the future definitely looks bright for us. All right, thank you so much, Chris. In You're respect welcome. to what Chris and he said as regards uh, the UN Senator on cryptocurrency, let's take a look at it. I think we may be on top of something that is transformational, and I don't think you can separate the underlying distributed ledger or blockchain from some of these crypto assets. And if we looked, if we had the same rate of increase that we've, the next two years that we've had the last couple of years, we're, we're talking now a couple hundred billion, we'd be at north of $20 trillion caught up in this area by 2020. Um, and I just, I, I think you, know, I remember back, I was lucky enough to get in the cell phone business back in the early 80s, and everybody thought it was going to be a small business, and they were wrong, and I got rich. I think we're looking at the same kind of transformation about to take place, and we are going to have to wrap our arms around it. All right, Chris. Thank you so much for coming around. You're it was, welcome. It was great having you on the show. I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> and um, our studio has upgraded. Yeah, you can. You can we have, we have better facilities there's, now. There's, there's future. For so crypto TV is going to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. We've come to the end of the show. Don't forget to get more information about the African narrative of cryptocurrency and the blockchain technology. Visit our website at CryptoTVPlus.com. Also, don't forget to follow us across our social media platforms at Crypto TV Plus. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I am Tony Obiajiro. Until I come your way next time, it's a bye for now.